Hello, Mishpacha. It's Courtney, America's Jewish Mother. Welcome back to my channel. It's Friday, so that means Friday Reads. So I have actually finished four books this week, um, thanks in large part to Doris's, at Doris at Aldi Books' mid-month book bash. Um, and I'm currently reading five books, so let's go. Um, so the first book that I finished this past week was Daniel Silva's Moscow Rules. This is the eighth book in the Gabriel Elon series, and because it's part of a series, I can't really say too much about the content, except that obviously, as implied by the title, it is largely set in Russia. <laughs> so, um, I ended up giving this book 3.25 stars. Um, I mostly liked it overall, and I did appreciate that um, Silva tightened up the plot and the number of characters from the seventh book, um, which I think was called The Secret Servant, which I was just like, there's too much stuff going on in this book. Um, so I appreciated that he did that, but this book essentially uses almost the exact same plot as a previous book in the series, and so I felt like, be more creative, <laughs> so don't use the same plot that you just used like two books ago. You know, it's not even like I'm reading these back to back. Like, I read this other book in, you know, December or something. Um, so that was annoying. And then the other thing I didn't like about this, and this is the case with, with pretty much all of Silva's books, is that at the end, when, you know, Gabriel's in some kind of crazy situation, and you're like, oh my gosh, how is he going to get out of this? There's just some deus ex machina that swoops in at the last minute and saves him. Um, so that also you know, definitely stretches credulity. I mean, like, if you do it once, okay, maybe, but, like, literally he does it every book. So, but otherwise it was enjoyable. Overall, quick read, a page turner, as usual, etc., etc. I'm sure I'm going to go ahead and read the ninth and tenth book in the series because I already own them. So, yeah, 3.25 stars. Um, the next book I finished, I do not have a physical copy with me because I read it as an ebook, but this was Julia Alvarez's Afterlife. I really liked this overall. I gave it four stars. It tells the story of a woman named Antonia um, who is retired from her career as a university English professor. Um, and when we meet her, she has some months previously lost her husband suddenly to an aneurysm. Um, so now she's kind of trying to figure out how to pick up the pieces and, you know, go on with her life and what she, what is she supposed to do now that she's lost her husband and she's retired from her job. Um, so she gets entangled in a couple of different situations, two mainly. So, um, one has to do with a sister of hers. There are, I think, four sisters and all. Um, so one of her sisters goes missing and then the other thing she gets tied up in is this plot with um, her neighbor. Um, the the neighbor has hired an undocumented teenager to work for him and the undocumented teenager's pregnant girlfriend shows up and then needs somewhere to stay. So Antonio also gets kind of entangled in that. Um, so yeah, it's really a book about how to sort of process your grief and move beyond yourself and how to pretty much go on with your life. Um, I really liked it overall. I found it a very compelling and engaging read. I also liked that Julia Alvarez includes um, a lot of different quotations from literature because Antonia was a an English professor and so she often reflects on some kind of book that she's read um, when she's trying to figure out what she should do in a situation. Um, so obviously as an English teacher, I was 100% a year for that. <laughs> so um, so that, that might have actually swayed me to a higher rating than I might otherwise have given it. But again, I, I did find it a very compelling and, and um, engaging read and I thought it was well constructed. And you know, it, it is a bit melodramatic and I think not everyone is gonna like it for that reason, but I personally like a little melodrama. So yeah, four stars, really like that. Um, and then the last book I finished over the mid-month book bash weekend was Casey Plett's A Safe Girl to Love. This is a collection of short stories. Casey Plett is a Canadian trans author. 
Um, so pretty much all of these stories, except for maybe like one or two, feature someone who is, feature like a transgender main character. Um, unfortunately, I did not like this collection overall, um, so I ended up giving it 2.5 stars. I will also say that I think perhaps I am not the target audience for this book. Um, I think if you are looking for trans representation in fiction, um, this does accomplish that, and I feel like I did learn some things about a specific kind of experience of being a trans woman, um, but the reason why I did not rate this hi more highly overall is that most of the stories seemed very similar to me, and the main characters seemed very similar. So I just felt like this might have actually been better as a series of interconnected short stories than trying to pretend like the characters were different when they clearly were not. So um, there were only maybe two or three stories out of the 11 in the collection that um, were kind of different in tone or had actually different characters. Um, and oh, and yeah, and I already complained about this in my mid-month book bash weekend vlog, but uh, one of the stories had a talking cat, and I seriously considered DNFing the book at that point. Um, because it was just weird and random, and it was totally treated as if this is normal, and yeah, of course a cat would talk, and why would I think that's weird or, or strange or anything? Um, now, it would have been different if the story had just been told from the cat's perspective. I wouldn't have minded that. But the fact that the cat talks, and again, that's just treated like it's a normal thing. I was like, what? What is happening? So... Um, so yes, I regret that I did not enjoy this more, um, but I think if you, if you're looking more for representation, this might be a good collection to read, or if you're looking to sort of learn about, uh, the experiences of trans women, this might be good to read, but as stories, I did not find them particularly well constructed, I did not find the characters compelling or substantially differentiated from one another, and then when the stories would end, I didn't feel like there had really been a point to them, so two and a half stars. Um, the last book that I finished this week was my fifth of six books for this round of the Booktube Prize. So I finished Kindred, which is the book about Neanderthals by Rebecca Rag Sykes, so obviously I can't talk about that here. I have already recorded my thoughts about it elsewhere in a vlog that will go up once the quarterfinals round is underway. So, yep, finish that too. Um, okay, so on to currently reading. Oh, first of all, I am 30 pages from the end of Moby Dick. 30 pages! <laughs> so, I'm going to finish that by tomorrow and do my final check-in with Melissa, and then um, next week I will probably post a standalone review of Moby Dick because I know you've all been waiting for me to finish this book for like three months. <laughs> So, standalone review will be coming. Um, so I'm still reading that, but about to finish it. I'm also still reading My Mammoth, The Count of Monte Cristo. I am currently on page 606 of like 1,460 pages. So progress. Progress is being made. <laughs> so yeah. Um, I also just started my last of the Book 2 Prize books for this round, which is Amy Stanley's Stranger in the Shogun City. I had to look because I actually got the title wrong in um, a clip I filmed for the blog. But, so I can't say anything about this except that I have just recently started it and it is the last of my Book Two Prize books for this round. So that's cool. Um, I'm also reading Agatha Christie's The Tuesday Club Murders. This is also known in some countries as The 13 Problems. This is a collection of short stories featuring Miss Marple. I am not quite halfway through the collection, like I'm just slightly under the, the halfway mark, um, and I'm enjoying them so far. I think I don't like short story mysteries as much as I like full book length mysteries, um, but they are, they are still enjoyable, and I mean, you know, you gotta love Miss Marple, right? So still enjoying that. Um, I'm sure I will finish this up in the next week. Um, and then last but not least, I am also currently reading What Were We Thinking? A Brief Intellectual History of the Trump Era by Carlos Lozada. I'm doing this as a buddy read with Jenny of What's Bookin'. Um, I, I'm currently about 100 pages into this, so we're, I think, like four chapters in. Um, and I'm really enjoying this so far, y'all. He, um, 
Lozada does a great job of breaking down Trump era books into different genres like he has one chapter on books trying to explain um, rural Trump voters that he calls the Heartlandia genre and he has a chapter about um, books that have to do with immigration. He has a chapter on um, resistance literature and he also has one that I've we've read so far about um, conservative viewpoints about Trump which he breaks down into sycophants, um, never Trumpers, and like pseudo intellectual Trump supporters. Um, so yeah, it's been really interesting and I, I have enjoyed it thoroughly thus far um, and expect for that to continue to be the case. So yeah. Um, so that is everything that I either finished or am currently reading. If you have thoughts about any of these books, I would love to hear them. Please let me know that down in the comments below. I hope everyone is doing well and staying healthy. I hope you're doing good reading whatever you're reading. And until next time, would I kill you to call you mama?